Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome to First United Methodist Church Amory this morning. We are so blessed that you are joining us here uh, on our, at our worship service this morning, however you are joining us. If you are here in person, we are so blessed to have you this morning. If you are joining us uh, virtually through our Facebook Live or our uh, church website, we are so very blessed that you are joining us here at Amory First this morning. Uh, speaking of, we are a very active church here at Amory, and we have several uh, events and things going on and happenings. For example, I just got done with the youth lock-in this past Saturday morning. Where there was a lot of fun involved, and there were a lot of games. And so it was an eventful night and a very long night. Um, with that being said, the youth are also going to a Redbirds game in Zoo this Wednesday. So we have a lot on the youth calendar. But if you want to know more, if you want to know more about all the goings on of the church, take a look at your bulletin. Look at, look at the back of it. Look inside of it. There are so many things going on in the life of the church, including Vacation Bible School and signing up for that and volunteering for that. So if you would like to be a volunteer for uh, Vacation Bible School, please contact uh, Shirley at, at uh, your convenience. Um, with all that being said, I think we can continue with our worship service this morning. Amen, we can. Let's do something we hadn't done in a while. We used to, you know, in fact, y'all used to, we would let you greet each other on Sunday morning before COVID. Some of y'all would go to the, the convenience store down here and get a Coca-Cola and come back. It takes so long. Let's don't do that. But let's stand up because we can and turn and wave at our neighbor as the praise band prepares to lead us in our opening song. Oh, y'all didn't take long enough. Uh, do it again. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, we ask that you join us uh, as we worship together singing Your Grace is Enough. Still waters and 
your hands and praise the Lord. I am thankful that God's grace is enough for me and God's grace is enough for you. Because I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, we would all be in a world of trouble if it was not for God's grace. Let's join together in our Apostles' Creed this morning as we stand together and state together what we believe as the called out church of God. I would just love to say to our congregation this morning, the stuff in the Apostles' Creed, not optional. This is orthodox Christian theology. This is what we should believe as God's called out church. So I ask you as God's called out church, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and we would invite our children to come down and Miss Beth to come and lead them this morning. Well, good morning. How is everybody this morning? I'm excited to see you guys here today. Are you excited to be here? That's wonderful. Let me let our other friends come in and sit down. What a great group we have today. I love this. So I'm going to ask you a question today. Have you ever been disappointed about anything? You know, I remember one time when I was a little girl, I was really, really excited about a birthday party that I got invited to, and then I got a cold, and my mother wouldn't let me go. So I was really disappointed about that. And then another time, it was my very own birthday, and I was anxiously awaiting a birthday present for my grandmother, and you know what? She gave me socks. <laughs> Nobody wants socks for their birthday, so I was disappointed. And, you know, even adults get disappointed. Yesterday, Mr. Paul and I were disappointed. Let me tell you what happened. We went out to run some errands, and as we were doing that, we saw the yogurt truck in the neighbor's um, parking lot, the hardware store parking lot. So we thought, that's awesome. We will go, and we'll run our errands, and then we'll go home for lunch, and then we'll come back, and we'll get some yogurt. Well, for a hot minute, we forgot about that, and around 2 o'clock, Paul said, oh, my gosh, we forgot to go get yogurt. So we went to go get yogurt, and the yogurt truck was gone. And to top that off, we got home, and we were sitting on the couch watching TV, and Paul looked out the window, and he said, hey, there's the ice cream truck. Did you know we have an ice cream truck? And the ice cream truck's name is Miss Susie. Well, before we could even get up and get to the door, because we're kind of old, the ice cream truck, Miss Susie, had passed us by. So not only did we not get yogurt, we didn't get ice cream either. So we were very disappointed about that. Well, you know, the Bible talks a lot about disappointment. And there's lots of people in the Bible who have been disappointed. Paul was so excited to go to Rome and talk to believers there. And some things happened. He didn't get to go. And he just had to write a letter. And he was disappointed about that. And then there was Job. Man, Job had a rough life. He lost his family. He lost his job. He lost everything. So he had to have been really disappointed. And then there was David who was anointed a king. And then there was like this other king named Saul that was like really jealous. And he was being really ugly to David. So I know he was disappointed about that too. But the great thing is... The Bible tells us that God will always be with us and always help us. 
the Bible tells us that God has a bigger plan than what our plan is. So even if it's just some little small disappointment like not getting yogurt or ice cream or if it's something really big that happens in our life, we know that all we have to do is ask God to be with us, that he will direct our paths and he will lead us down the path that he wants us to go to follow the bigger plan that he has for us. So that's kind of exciting, don't you think? So next time you're disappointed about something, just remember to take it to God and he's going to lead you down a better path. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for these precious children that are here today to praise and worship you. We thank you that you're with us through the good times, the bad times, the big disappointments, and the little disappointments. And we thank you so much for guiding us and directing us as we go throughout our week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I'd like to invite everybody to stand. We're going to sing God's Not Dead, and it just sounds better when everybody's standing up. So we're going to kick that off. Let us unite our hearts together in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty and majestic Father, Lord God Almighty, your grace is enough. We're saved by your grace through faith and not of ourselves. It is your gift to us in Christ Jesus. And you continue to anoint us with Holy Spirit. We want to thank you for 
being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and being with us today. We are thankful for your grace and your mercy. We're thankful that you energize us through your Holy Spirit, enable us to witness, to share in your holy name, to share your love with others. And Father, for those times we have failed you, when we do fail, we ask your forgiveness and your mercy. Thank you for the forgiveness of sin and casting our sin from us as far as the east is from the west and choosing to remember our sin no more. God, it's beyond our belief at times. Sometimes it's beyond our belief, this thing about prayer and how you listen to us and how we can listen to you and be still and quiet and hear your voice in our hearts in our minds. And God, we pray that you will guide and direct us each and every day. Bless worship today and Caleb as he brings the message. Bless our church family. God in our nation and our leaders. Father, we're going to be as honest with you as we can. We prayed about COVID before and God, it's time for it to end. We prayed about politics and Disorder in the world, and God, it's time for it to end. And we know that you can use us, and we must do our part, but God, we're looking to you for wisdom and guidance and direction. God, for spiritual wisdom in this world in which we live, to serve in such a way that people are being brought to Christ each and every day. Lord, we're concerned about the price of food and gas prices, and those who are homeless, and those who are afraid, those who are lonely, those who are children. God, the politics of the world and the cruelty of it at times and the greed and the selfishness. God, act on it. We've asked before. We ask again with faith. We trust and we believe. And if we believe, things will happen in our lives. And God, we choose to follow Christ fully and completely. And we thank you in his holy name and thank you for allowing us to pray as he has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On behalf of First United Methodist Church, I just want to say a thank you. On behalf of the church, on behalf of our church treasurer, on behalf of our church council, uh, if you faithfully support the budget of the church, thanks. Thanks, thanks. What a blessing you are and what a blessing your faithfulness is. You are appreciated and you are a blessing to the work of God. If our ushers would come forward, we will worship God with our tithes and our offerings.
Given uh, Lynn a workout this morning, so as he makes his way back down here, we're going to get set up for our anthem, which is called All My Hope. Bo, give him a big hand. He moves from high church organ to a boogie woogie piano to, uh, and now he's fixing to do a little bit of like a slow gospel blues, so uh, he is nothing if not versatile. Um, this is a new song. Uh, do we have sound back? Oh, yeah. Okay. We, uh, John, we need plenty of piano on this because he's carrying this whole thing. All right. Uh, this is a newer song uh, from David Crowder called All My Hope. And so uh, you may never have heard it before, but I asked the audio visual guys to like put the chorus up there anyway, because this is a chorus that you just want to sing. So feel free just to throw in when we get to the chorus. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. All my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. Just that much, real easy. So just feel free to join in with us. All right, Lynn, you ready to throw down on this one? See 
That was wonderful. Those of you uh, may notice that uh, for, what now, a couple of months, Lindsay, you've been doing this. If you've noticed that the stuff on the screens has looking looked significantly better, it means I'm not doing it anymore. Now, this week I did it. And in fact, I was apologizing to Lindsay for stealing some of her font and, you know, she, how lazy I was not even to change the font or anything. Uh, but um, I say that to say that there are tons of people here at First Methodist Church behind the scenes doing stuff to make worship happen. This does not magically happen. This is hard work every week to make this work. So uh, if you see some of those folks uh, in the nursery, in the TV room, the ushers in the back, the musicians, choir, the praise band, you ought to just tell them thank you a lot uh, because it requires a lot of effort and energy for us to come together and worship in community. And I want to say that I am so thankful for those folks behind the scenes that make it happen every week. Let me say this too before we read our text from 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 1 through 9 just to let you know a little bit about the preaching that is going to be coming to you this year. Uh, This morning Caleb is going to begin a sermon series called What We Learn from Biblical Parents. So we're going to be looking at parents in the Bible and what they teach us uh, about Raising our children, but also what it looks like to live faithfully in the world for God. Uh, We're going to break that series and pick it up again in the fall where we will look at some more of those biblical parents. There's also a sermon series coming this year. Uh, What is biblical repentance? So what does it mean to truly repent of your sins? Um, And then also... We will look at the topic of what is a Methodist. What is a Methodist? So, I would invite you now, if you will, to hear the reading from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, found on Pew Bible, page 211. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day recalling your tears, I long to see you to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, But join with me in the suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. morning. I'm really excited about this series, taking a look at biblical parents, because um, I had a very parent experience on Saturday morning, and I'm going to tell you about it. And in fact, I'm going to ask for your prayers for it, because here's what happened. As as parents, we have this idea that we want to put our child in bubbles, plastic bubbles of protection. The youth recently got a brand new kind of game using giant plastic bubbles. And you would think that would be one of the safer games. It was not. 
one of our youth actually did get hurt. And her knee, I believe it was a minor dislocation of her knee uh, using those plastic bubbles. And as a parent and as a youth director, your heart just breaks in that moment when you see your child injured, your child that you care for, your child that you love, and you think, if I just put this in this bubble, I can protect them from this situation. But even when you do that, it's like there's always those slight dangers that can happen in the world. And so we did have to take her to the emergency room that, uh, that morning at 5.30. So when I say the lock-in was eventful, it was very, very eventful. Um, but it is my understanding that nothing is broken and that uh, she is having an MRI on her knee tomorrow, and we believe it is just a slight dislocation. She went to the doctor Saturday. So please pray for our uh, wonderful church member, Maggie Laney, who usually sits over here. Please be in prayer for her. Um, you know, you, you wish you could just wrap their entire bodies up in a bubble, but um, it doesn't work either. But I say that as an intro because this parenting and learning how to be godly parents is very important. It's very vital to our understanding of who we are as Christians and how we raise children up in the church. So today we're looking at Timothy. And I want to give a little background real quick on Timothy. So when was Timothy written? It was written about 64, 65 A.D. So why was the book of Timothy written? Well, Paul is getting very close to the end of his life. Paul is getting ready to be this, this martyr that we know him as. And so at the end of his life, in his elderly age, who is he turning to? He's turning to the young people. He's writing a letter to Timothy to encourage, to build up, to lift up another leader in the church. Another person that we can look to to help guide us. Timothy as being that person that can be responsible, that can lead others to Christ. That is what Paul was trying to do and accomplish in this letter, in his writings. And he's doing it even in his elderly age. So older people in the congregation, I don't want to hear excuses about not writing and talking to some of these young folk. If you want to know when is the time to build these young folk up, it's right now. Write them a letter. Go up and tell them and say, I see you in church, young person. So happy you're here. We want you to be a leader. As parents, we are spiritual leaders in our households, raising that next generation of Christian. And that responsibility falls to you as parents. Paul played a big part of encouraging and leading Timothy throughout his life. But Paul thanks two very specific people. He thanks Lois, Timothy's grandmother, and Eunice, his mother, for raising Timothy to have sincere faith. Lois and Eunice were some of the first converts to Christianity. If you look back in Acts chapter 16, you see their conversion. And then they are converting Timothy. Timothy is second generation of Christianity. Paul is saying, okay, first generation, wonderful, keep going. But we got to have that second generation know who Christ is. Yes. We have to have that second generation understand that sincere faith is necessary for your relationship with Jesus. Lois and Eunice, two women, by the way. It is believed that Timothy's father was actually Greek. And so Timothy's conversion, his upbringing, his sincere faith is because of the work and love his mother and grandmother poured into him. It wasn't his father. It was his mother and grandmother, women, 
oftentimes looked as seeing as being on the edges of society. No, they raised a Christian man. Now, a little bit about my story and my connection to this. A lot of people will say, well, you're a PK, and that means you're a pastor's kid. Now, I am not technically a pastor's kid. I am a YPK. I am a youth pastor's kid. My mother was a youth director for 13 years. She brought me up in the church. Youth trips, Sunday nights, devotionals for breakfast... All those things when I was a teenager left a thumbprint on my life because she kept me in the church. She said, Christ is going to be stamped on my son. That was such a profound and significant thing for me and my upbringing. And you're probably like, oh, Caleb, we, we get it. Your, your, your mother worked for the church. That was kind of her job as the youth director. Do you want to know where I first studied Old Testament theology? At my grandmother's house. You see, it wasn't even the fact that my... <laughs> It wasn't even the fact that my mother was a youth director. It was the fact that my grandmother had told her that church was going to be a priority, that the history, that this book, that the Bible was going to be a priority in her life. She was going to raise a Christian woman in her household. And so that is the reason why my mother felt a call to ministry later on in her life. After she had been a nursery worker forever, she said, God is calling me to make an impact, to change children's lives, to raise up another generation. Paul said we cannot end it with our generation. We can't just let go and let our children be. We have to instill in them a faith. We have to put our thumbprint to let them know that Christ is their Savior. And that is the responsibility of parents. That is, that is these two women raising up a son in a Christian home. That is what we are called to do. For the next generation, we need to fan the flames that are already in them. The Holy Spirit is in our youth. The Holy Spirit is in our youth a fire, a passion for God. As godly leaders, as godly parents, we are called to bring that fire out of them into the world. To stoke those flames, not to squelch them. You're looking at me, and I appreciate it. I see I have your attention. How do we do this, Caleb? How do we go about stoking those flames? How do we go about doing these things? Help! That's what I felt like Saturday morning. I'm a parent and I need help. Like Paul, we need to let our kids know that God is our strength. We need to not be afraid to have faith and to share our faith. Even when Paul is about to be put to death, he told Timothy not to fear sharing his testimony. Suffering and sacrifice are expected in our faith journeys. But the more you share your testimony, the easier it becomes to share your testimony. When you share for the first time Christ with your child, the more you do it, the easier it will become to talk about Christ to your child. Let the church lay hands on them. Get them involved. Youth groups, youth trips, Sunday night, Wednesday nights. There is a plethora. There is a bulletin. I just went to a lock-in. I got a Redbirds game on Wednesday. We have opportunities here at Amory First for me and for Wesley to minister. 
to preach to your children, to preach to them at church, to preach to them on, on youth trips, on devotionals. There are opportunities here. Let the church lay hands on them as you lay hands on them as well. VBS, VBS volunteering, children's ministry, choir, usher. When we encourage them to serve, to invest, to love the church, the church responds. And relationship is formed. The flames inside them don't go out when we do these things. They are stoked. They burn brighter when we do these things with our kids. They no longer see themselves, oh, I'm just my father's child or I'm just my mother's child. They say, I am a child of God. And that is what we want more than anything for our children and for our youth, for them to understand that they are children of the Most High, that their parents are children of the Most High, that their grandparents are children of the Most High God. Let the children of God say amen. We are all children of God. Let the children of God say amen. Amen and amen. All I got to do is point him in a direction. And I love that. I love that. And I will also add, brothers and sisters, it really does, when we talk about discipling our children and our grandchildren, it takes the whole community. And, 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 and bring, if you bring them to every church event that we offer, it's not enough. You have to be the priests, the teachers, the prayers in your home. You got to do that at home with them. You got to give them, they got to learn to love scripture at home. I can't get them to learn to love it here. You got to do it at home. But there is a, a powerful call that we have to our children and our grandchildren to fan the flame so that they can grow up to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Powerful word. Powerful word. The altar is open this morning if you want to pray, if you want to kneel down and commit, because I know as a father of three small children that I fail regularly in discipling them that I often react in ways that are not beneficial to their development. And so, great time for all of us to kneel down and ask for the Lord's help and guidance as we seek to fan the flames for our children and grandchildren, nieces and nephews, and just friends here at First Methodist Church. If you need to pray about anything else on your heart and mind, I would be uh, honored to do that with you today. Let's stand and sing together. I'm going to kneel and pray and ask for the Lord's help as I seek to fan the flames of our children. You do the same with me if you want to. The altar's open.
Uh, next week, of course, will be Father's Day, and we have some cool Father's Day gifts for our dads to share with you. Uh, I will tell you that we will be journeying next week in the sermon with Abraham and Isaac up Mount Moriah as he goes up there and prepares to sacrifice his one and only son to God. And uh, thankfully, that does not happen, and God provides a ram in the bush. So you can go to Genesis and read ahead if you want to catch up for next week's sermon. Uh, and then a few announcements that I will share with you. Uh, we will have a church council meeting immediately following worship in the conference room. We will have pizza for our, our uh, council members. Rick, I don't think I told you it's Pizza Hut. Okay, good. Pizza Hut, not Domino's. I didn't want him to go to Domino's by accident. Uh, Pizza Hut. So we will meet in the conference room, which is on the first floor of this building. Also, for those of you that are in Daniel Bible study, the Daniel Bi midweek Daniel Bible study that's normally on Wednesday at 11 will be Thursday at 11. In the lounge, same place, Thursday at 11 instead of Wednesday. So uh, just wanted to point that out. And, uh, and then our Vacation Bible School, there's registration forms in the vestibule, downstairs. They're scattered all over the building. Uh, I've, I've seen them myself. I think there's some even outside here around my office area maybe even. But uh, if you need to uh, sign up, you can't find one, call the church office. They'll be happy to help you with that. And also for our uh, volunteers as well, uh, you're never too old to help with VBS, so we would love to help uh, have your help with that. And then lastly, and this is far out, for our senior adults, uh, we're going to do a special luncheon in July chapter, uh, July the 12th, I'm sorry I'm still preaching, July the 12th, a special lunch for our seniors in the lounge, home-cooked meal, special music on our new, if you hadn't checked it out, donated to the church, new Yamaha baby grand piano in the lounge. Beautiful, beautiful instrument. And so special music lunch for our seniors. You just need to call. It's not going to cost you a thing. You just need to call and let us know so we know how much food to prepare. So if you miss out on that, it's on you. It's not on me because I'm going to work hard in the kitchen to make it the best meal you've ever had. All right. The love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.
Thank you.